Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, working the late night hours. In a prior video, you may have heard me complain that I uh, was not happy with the roller bearings in my bandsaw. Overall, I like the bandsaw real well, but these roller bearings that guide the blade, not so much. They, they're cheap, a poor design, everything. Uh, instead of hitting on the round part of the bearing and rolling down the bearing, it hits on the side of the bearing, which is just really dumb. And the bearing doesn't spin that way very good, and a lot of times it'll just rub a groove right in the bearing. The ones below, the ones under the table, uh, clog up with sawdust all the time. I'm always having to take them out and clean them. I've put new bearings in several times. It's just been a nightmare. So I'm not happy with that. Otherwise, I actually like the uh, Grizzly bandsaw. It's, it's made well other than these darn little guides. I went to Carter Bandsaw Products. It's Carter Products. I don't, I'm not affiliated with them. I bought this with my own money, so I don't know much about it. I just got it in the mail today. And I will tell you, without having any idea whether this stuff's gonna fit or work or not, it's really well made. The machining on it is just really nice. It's, uh, you can see that roller bearing turns the right direction. The blade will go down this way and it hits correctly instead of the flat way like they do on this bandsaw presently. This is the cup that would fit on the uh, shaft here and uh, then the blade goes down through here. This is for the top or above the table. And this one is made to go below the table. But you can see it also has the roller bearing turning the correct direction. Most of the work I have to do is on this side. However, my hand is gonna be in front of everything. I've got a uh, 10 millimeter wrench here and I cheated earlier and already loosened this up and you can see it falls right off and that round shaft right there is the critical thing that fits inside of here, I hope. This piece here, they sent a new piece for that, but this is for the little cheaper bandsaw, I think. It doesn't seem to match up. I'm hoping this is gonna work with this. I don't know that it will for sure, but I hope it does. I can sit it on there just to get it out of my way for the moment. That's what I'm going to do. This, I can see, has Allen adjustment, it looks like, right here. That looks like that's adjustable and should work. Wow, it's looking good so far. All of these Allens are stick protruding in here, and so it won't go up on there very far. So I'm just going to back them out. I don't know for sure how to do all this. I'm just kind of going by the seat of my pants. It's a round deal, so I'm just trying to line this up by eye. Okay, I can see that that adjusts. So I'll have to back this off to where these rollers are in the right place. Looks about right. So I'm tight, tightening that up. Okay, and then this is not forward enough. These, are, these are rollers are where they should hit the blade as far as I can tell, except that they're too far apart. Lightly adjusting them at the moment. Trying to get it where there's just a whisper of space between them there. And then I can roll this forward. It seems, boy, it seems like it's just a simple, simple design, which kind of happy with that. Really, I, I like, I like simple. Now, though, I got to be honest. I think I missed the center line here. So I think, doing all that, I think I'm going to loosen these back up, and I'm going to loosen these Allen set screws again. See if I can turn it by hand here. There, yeah, I did it. That's that's pretty much dead center. The bearing there. I kind of did like the adjustment on the Grizzly because he just dialed it in. That looks pretty good to me. That might be a little tight. I don't know. I'm just gonna go with that for the moment. 
I didn't take anything loose down below. Okay, this is still loose though, so I don't wanna turn it on yet. There's nothing there to connect this to now. The old one was machined to fit here. Bummer. So there's no way to connect that, it doesn't look like. Although it came with this, that can't get it done because it's square above this one. I think this whole kit was meant to fit on their cheaper model uh, bandsaw. It doesn't appear to fit on this model very well. I don't see a good option for this other than to make something to fit across here and across here. You have to make something that screws in here and in here to hold this up. It came with this, but this doesn't even start to fit this machine. There's nothing to hold this guard up, you know, to go up and down. On the old one, it came right off of here and you just, it, it screwed right in there. So, and by the way, you can see these bearings are shot. They're just, they just stick. The, and these are the good ones. These are the ones on top, but I can feel how rough they are. I did like this adjustment because you could adjust these with the threads. That was, that was nice. This one here, you know, it's, it's a faster adjustment, really. I kind of like the adjustment, but it's quite different. I guess I'm going to uh, stop the video right there until I decide how I'm going to handle this. Well, my friends, I think I've got the proper bracket made. Basically, just sits on here like so. Then this part here, which will come down and, and mount to that. So this is actually going to go on the outside. When I do that, everything looks like it lined up perfectly. I cut a little notch out here so I can still get to this Allen screw. I think that's going to work really nice. Now, the first thing I have to do is I'm, there was a, there's a bolt through here already. So I'm going to use that to mount it, or at least that's my plan. Well, I don't know if I had the camera on or not. I've made this piece. I had it clamped on here. I used this center punch to go through and mark where I need to drill the hole here. And so now I'm going to mark it a little better and drill this hole. I've got the bolt through there. I had to get a little longer bolt, but I've got one there and it seems to be working. Then I've got a washer and a nut that I'm gonna put on on this side here where you can't see it. I want to line this up again with that bolt and hopefully get it straight. Looks good and solid. Let's just see if it's still straight. Yeah, it's almost perfectly straight, so I'll go with that. And now we'll pull this down, and this goes here. It lines up about right there. Now I've got to find a way to keep this space the same. So I think I'll just maybe find me a block of wood or something that'll fit in there that I can just clamp and then mark this. That way this won't be flopping around on me when I'm trying to mark this because I'd like to mark it as accurately as possible. Okay, to hold this still where I want it, I have put a piece of three quarter in there and that seems to be just about the right amount. And then I am just going to use a squeeze clamp here like this to hopefully put it in place. Yeah, I'm a little low. Hopefully that's gonna be about it. That looks pretty good. And now I can go on the other side, mark the holes on this piece of aluminum, which you can't see again, of course. I think I'm actually gonna thread this aluminum because this is a fairly thick piece of aluminum and then put, put little uh, screws in from the back side. I found some 1032 screws that I think are gonna be just perfect for this. And I've got a number 21 bit. You machinists out there will know what that is. All right, I'll do it on this side. Maybe you can see me a little better. I'm holding it with these pliers. I'm gonna drill uh, three 21, number 21 drill holes in this. Okay, now assuming I can find my 1032 tap, we'll tap those holes. 
A lot of people would start this in a drill press or something, and, and I could do that, but for these little tiny screws and for no more than we're holding here, this should work fine. Yeah, well, there you that. Okay, that's going in the trash. I'm tired of that thing breaking all the time. It's just a piece of junk. Well, this tap wrench may not be any better, but the only way to know is to try it. I've got a bunch of these little tap wrenches, and I never know which ones are the good ones, but I'm throwing all the bad ones away. I'm tired of dealing with them. I'm going to have to get me some WD-40 and put on this because it's... Whatever kind of aluminum it is, it seems to be kind of grabby. And I don't want to strip the threads out. Well, everything is working out really simple. Uh, no, it isn't. This was broke. I had to fix this. At least now it's spinning. Hopefully the WD-40 will keep from stripping it out. And we're all the way through now. At least this wrench seems to be holding at the moment. I shouldn't have said that. With that WD-40 on there, it really does cut a lot better. I can feel the difference. One more. I could have got by with just these two, but I figured since I got three holes there, might as well use them. Okay, let's mount this up. Hopefully we can get her done this time. Let's see, we've got the bolt that's got to go through here first. I've got these little Allen head cap screws that uh, will go through from the other side. I haven't tested them in these new threaded holes yet, but hopefully they'll work. Ah, so far. Start them all before I tighten any, as my buddy uh, Jeff Bradshaw from ElderlyIron.com would say. Coming around here to see what it looks like. Oh wow, it looks perfectly in a line. Uh, those two are through. The other one, I just can't, it just won't line up. Well, what do you know, I ran the tap back through there again, and uh, now I can get this screw in also so I don't know that's perfect so they all through came through now I'm just looking at everything to see if everything looks square um, actually it may not be square this way yeah it looks pretty good I think it looks really good I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it up all right all three are snug down pretty tight now I'm just going to rotate everything by hand to make sure there's nothing grabbing. This wheel is grabbing the blade a little bit much. See if I can loosen this up just a hair. That's just about perfect. It's just barely touching now. This side here might could go a little bit closer. There's a little bit of more play there than I want, I think, but it doesn't seem to be hitting anything at the moment. Backwards, I've got too much backwards motion, it looks like. And hopefully now I can still get to this. Yes, I can. I think we're right where we want to be now. we got a little, still just a little more play than I like. There's some other play in this thing somehow. I don't know where that play's coming from. Oh, I don't have it tightened down. That might be part of it. Yeah, that, that's a big part of it, actually. Should have had that tightened down. That's about as tight as it's going to get, and, it's still, and it hardly has any play, and, there, and the wheels are not actually touching, though. I'm just going to turn it on to see if anything happens, because I haven't changed the bottom at all. Well, i got to plug it in. Okay, it's plugged back in. I'm just going to turn it on to see if anything happens here. Looks fine to me. So the top is fixed. Let's double check to make sure that this thing still goes up and down. Yeah, perfectly. 
Doesn't seem to get in the way of the blade while the blade is still spinning a little bit there. Works perfect. So that is a huge success. And it doesn't look too terribly bad. I guess I could paint that red or black or something to make it blend in. These screws could be knocked off a little bit shorter, wouldn't hurt anything, but you know, it's fine. It really is perfect like that. It won't be any kind of a problem, so I may just leave it, who knows. All right, now I gotta go to the bottom side. We'll have to take the table off and see what happens. Hopefully you can see this blade design. Of course, I'm gonna have to clean this first. See, you can look, see that bearing doesn't even turn, it's stuck. It just, I just cleaned them like a week ago and, and I can force it around and these are the same way, they're stuck too. Well, although they are working, but just barely. So I really hate these down here. You can see I've cleaned that now and it looks like there's two bolts holding this down and I don't feel any nuts on the inside, so hopefully it's just the bolts and then this whole assembly should lift off, I think. Fortunately, these bolts have a Phillips head on the, and I can get a Phillips screwdriver in there. I could probably get a socket wrench on that too, but I'd have to use an extension, etc. So this seems to be working. Well, there you go. That whole assembly just pops right off of there with the two bolts. That's all there was holding it. It looks like it's going to be a fairly simple job. I shouldn't say that because that's usually when it goes to, you know, wearing a hand basket. Can't get the screws down in there, so I'll take it off and put the screws down through these holes and then set it in place and hopefully the screws will be pretty close. All right, so I'm going to try to line this up square. Looks like I need to loosen this one up and pull it out a little bit because it's kind of rubbing. And I'm trying to get it in the center and it doesn't look like it's going to go dead center unless I, unless I torque it a little bit. And I, then, then these won't be hitting flat if I torque it. Maybe there's some other adjustment I'm not familiar with. It's not right down the center of this bearing, unfortunately, and I don't see a way to get it there. All right, let's see now if we spin it. I don't see anything moving. Got a little bit of play down there, but on the bottom side, that may be better to have just a little bit more play. It's not running down the dead center of this back washer. I could probably put a real thin shim in there to pull that out a little bit. I could cock the whole thing, but then it wouldn't be square to the blade. I like it square to the blade. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. Everything looks perfect. I don't think it could look much better. Yeah, and it, it doesn't have much play at all going that way. I like it. There is no question it's made better. The only question I have is will the bearings last longer? And my guess is they will. I have a feeling this, because this is a much more quality piece, they probably use better bearings. I'm hoping so anyway. I do like the way this tightens down better than the old one. The old one had little thumb screws and they would come loose no matter how hard you tighten them. It feels so much better in terms of the, uh, those bearings don't have any play in them at all. They're just nice bearings. Ordinarily, I would take the blade out to do this, but this thing seems to allow you to do this, so I'm going to do it. Now I just gotta pick it up and get it in the little trunnions. I think I did it that time. Yep. Well, it's all back together. Everything seems to be tightened up. I'll put the blade about, I'll put the blade guy down about where it ought to be. Just cut myself just now. I didn't cut myself on the blade in case you're wondering. It was something sharp underneath there where I was tightening down the trunnion. It was on the back side. I didn't touch 
it was not the blade. Everything looks good. It looks really good, in fact. As a matter of fact, I can't believe how nice it looks. It's so much better made. So let's turn it on and see if it blows the blade right off. Very good. Little bit of movement on that wheel there. Just barely touching. Almost no noise at all out of it, other than the motor. I'm going to move this one out a little bit after the blade stops. That's better. That looks really good. I am tickled with it. I just... Everything looks fine under there. I don't see any problems, so I'm just hoping those uh, bearings will last longer. Now I'll show you one more toy I got for this thing. This is a Carter Magnafence 2. If you're looking for one of these, you can go to carterproducts.com. Now, this just sits on here, and you turn these two little knobs, you just turn them, and it, it instantly sticks down. See how it just it's just there? And as soon as I turn these knobs, like so, now it's stuck. I mean, honestly, I think you can pick up the machine with that. It's that tight. It shakes the whole machine. The only thing I don't like about this is there's no way to line it up. To, you know, you could be this way or this way. I'm gonna, I haven't read the directions yet, but I love how this thing fastens down to the table. Just, to, just, just like that. I mean, just turn those two knobs just a half a turn, and it is stuck. It's amazing how those magnets are that strong, like that. You just, and it's so easy to put on and off. My thought on how I might use this is I might actually take and scribe some very light lines with a scriber and a square and put square lines across the table, uh, maybe every half inch and just one little fine line. And then that way I can line this up with those lines. And even if I'm halfway between, if I have the lines there, I can kind of eyeball it and go, hey, it's square, you know. So that's what I've got in mind. Now, I haven't read the directions yet, so there may be something I don't know. But, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, there, it does come, I did notice on the directions, I only briefly looked at that, is that there is, it came with these accessories, and you can screw them down and tilt this thing here to make it square to the table. So I haven't you know, read about that yet either, but I do know it has the ability to be squared up to the table so that everything is perpendicular. Well, I gotta be honest, it doesn't look like it matches the blade that great. It could, it would have to be tilted back a little bit to match the blade. So it comes with the hardware to, to do that. Okay, hopefully you can see it. Uh, it's locked right now. If I, I can't move it, you can see I'm pushing on, I'm moving the whole machine. All it takes is just Turn them like that, it's totally loose now. Just like that, it's locked. I mean, I know that they make these kinds of things. I use them on my, on my metal lathe all the time. They make all kinds of indicator holders and things that do the same thing. But it's just amazing how strong that is. Before I can make good use of this fence, we have to square it to the table. I have my square on here and hopefully you can see that it's touching at the top and it's not touching at the bottom so it needs to be rocked back. Well I've got it locked down to the table. There are adjustment screws here and here and they have a uh, plastic foot on them so that they can screw down and lift the f this up. You can adjust it either way. If you need to lift, if you needed to tilt it that way, you'd put the screws back here. Since I need to tilt it this way, I put the screws toward the front. Now I should be able to simply tighten this, these screws down until I see the gap change. And I'm going to do it at the front here, like this. And I need to go a little more. I'm going to tip the other one too. 
got the light behind it to try to see how well it's tipped. That one looks pretty good now. This one, if anything, I'm tipped a little too far probably now. So I'll let it back down. Right there looks good. Keep adjusting it back and forth here, just trying to see what looks the best. It looks great in the middle, and it looks real nice at that end. So to me, those, those are good. Now I'm going to put these nuts on there and tighten them down, and that should lock it into place. Okay, so hopefully it's still an adjustment. That looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to call that good enough. Let's see if it's repeatable. Now we, we take it off, we put it back on, lock it back down, and let's see if that's repeatable. Looks, looks fine to me. So we have the fence squared to the table now. Now, I'm going to make something that will square this. They recommend just using a square and put it on the front of your table. Now this table, unfortunately, has two offsets. And the offsets are machine square to the table, but the rest of the table is not. And because of those offsets, you can't just put a square here because the square would be doing this. So I'm going to make a special square that comes all the way back and grabs on this bar. In fact, I'm going to use this as the grab here. And anyway, it's going to be a homemade deal. I'll show you how I make it. All right, in order to make this new square, I'm going to run this. I want to resaw it. This is a full two inches thick. And I want to resaw this to about an inch and a quarter. The new bearings are on here. So this is a test of the uh, new fence and the new bearings. I would say the new bearings work great on that cut and the new fence work great on that cut as well. Since this board is wider than I need, I'm going to cut, rip off a little bit off this edge and some more off of this edge. M mainly on this edge to get rid of these holes. Alright, my idea is to make a square that would hang off of here, come up here, you know, and, and line this up. Now, you know, it's a little far out here. I, I wish I could do it off the table, but it just, it just won't work well off the table. So I'm going to have to come out here. It's going to be a fairly long square. You know, I was thinking of making it just a, an L-shaped square like normal. And that way I could go from the blade back so far, but then I start to run out of table back here. Let's see here, how far can I really go anyway? I can't, I can't go very far because I run out of magnet space. So I can only go to about here anyway. Will a regular square do me for that? You know, I think it will. I think I'll just make it a regular L square because I think it'll be fine. I'm going to use my homemade thickness sander to square up this uh, block and to, you know, smooth it off. And that's what it looks like under there, if this is the first video you've seen. There's just sticky sandpaper at, on there at a spiral. And that paper's been used quite a bit. I could do with some new paper, but right now this will be fine. I've already got it preset for the first pass through here. and there's a crack in this board. It's not that's going to make any difference. I'm just going to run a little CA glue down in there and uh, then maybe run it through the sander a time or two again just to smooth that out and keep it stable. I think that stabilized it. You can't feel it now. And, uh, you know, it's not that it's going to make any real difference anyway. Off camera, I ran this through, at the good edge through the joiner, and I also just lightly touched it on the sander just so it's good and flat and smooth. I also knocked off all the corners on the sander just to make them smooth and round and there's no splinters. It, it feels good in your hand, so it's, it's nice and slick. 
For the blade of the square, I'm going to use some uh, quarter inch plywood. And we're going to run that through here and make it one and a half inches wide. I've got my plywood lay it, laid on there and squared up and it feels good. I've also sanded off the corners of the plywood so that it's smooth and everything. Everything's nice and smooth. Yes, I could have flush cut this and all that, but I don't care about that. I, as a matter of fact, uh, flush cutting it creates additional issues, which I'm not going to go into. But what I'm going to do then is I'm going to spray this with accelerator. I'm going to put the CA glue on here, enough just to stick it down. I'm going to get it squared up and lay it on there and let it dry, let it do its thing. That should, you know, hold it square. I'm going to drill a couple of little holes in here and put some countersink screws in this just to make sure it never moves. Well, I found a slight design flaw in my plan. This works fine. I, I could use it just like it is, don't get me wrong. But it could be improved. Because this is heavy, it wants to fall down, obviously. And even if it was a light wood, it would still do that. But this heavy wood does it especially bad. What would make it nice, there is a shelf right here. So I'm going to wrap it a little notch out on this, where this can sit on that shelf and still be square. And then it will sit there like that. But now, when it sits there that way now, it's not level with the table, see? So I want to uh, notch this out where it can sit on that shelf and be level with the table. We've got it set up. I'm gonna take a conservative cut here the first time, of course, and then test it. And uh, I just want to point out that I've also checked the width of this to make sure that, because if this wasn't the same width on both ends when I run it through here, this would not be a square cut. It was exactly to almost to the thousandth of an inch. I mean, like maybe a half a thousandth out. Okay, that's a much better design. It fits on this little ledge right here, and it fits square and perfect. I just, I like it. I can look down this slot and tell it's perfectly square. The way I use this, though, there's still another problem. And that is, you know, like if I'm cutting anything on this side of the blade, great. But when, but a lot of the stuff that I do is so narrow. I mean, it's like little tiny pieces like this wide. Well, I don't have any way to square it still. It's still not going to work. So if I make a notch out in this, then, you know, for the blade, then I can still use this. I had thought about this last night as I was contemplating building this, and I thought, well, that'll be the best solution for me personally. For some people, that may not be a smart idea, but for me, it's a great idea for the way I use the bandsaw. Perhaps you can see the little circle I've marked on here, and that's what we're going to be cutting out now. You know, and that still leaves over three quarters of an inch. I, I, I marked it out where I'm taking out about five eighths of an inch. That should work perfect for my purposes. Now you can see that cut out centers on that blade, and I can get the fence really close now. So I've got quite a bit of latitude there. I can go out to almost five eighths of an inch. So between an inch and a half and five eighths, I've got a little bit of a problem. But right now that's a pretty good solution. I, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's summarize and see what we've got. Regarding the bearings, these Carter bearings, absolutely I would do that again in a heartbeat, no question about it. I think they're great. Yeah, it took a little extra building for this bracket right here that I had to make, but that bracket wasn't that tough to fabricate, and it almost looks like it's part of the saw, the way I made it and everything, so I'm real happy with that. So the bearings, that's a total win. The fence, you know, it's got its real neat points and its negative points. The negative, of course, is that you have to have this extra, you know, tool to line up the fence. With the stock fence, I just set it on here, tighten it down, and it's instantly square. Just push this lever down, bingo, you're done. 
And this, the stock fence has the advantage. I can flip this around that quick as you just saw. And now I have a square tall fence. So the stock fence is pretty hard to beat on this bandsaw. But the one negative of the stock fence is that it's either very, very low or very, very tall. This one fills the bill in between there, which I like a lot. So I, I like this one a ton because of the fact that this is only so high and a lot of the stuff I cut is very small. So like I'm trying to recut or resaw as they call it, a small piece of wood. Well, this fence would be better suited for that small piece of wood rather than having to have the blade guard up so high um, not that that's a big issue, but uh, I mean, I can resaw small stuff on this fence just fine. But I do like that on this. Would I buy this again for the, for the cost of it? I don't know. You know, I will tell you for sure, it'll be a great fence on my other bandsaw that doesn't have a fence at all. Uh, I have a homemade fence on it, but it's a piece of junk to be perfectly honest with you. And this will be great over there. And I can also use this square over there. So, you know, it's, 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 it was a good purchase for me personally. For you, you'd have to decide, is it worth it to have to use an extra square to square it up to the table? My vote's kind of out on that. I haven't used it enough yet to really decide, is it worth it? But I do like the locking bit. I mean, that is so cool. And you know, you can even store it like right here. You just, you know, just lock it down. You can just store it anywhere. <laughs> Any place that's metal, you know, you, and it's solid. It's not going anywhere. I hope you learned something from what I did. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah.